Uh, thank you so much for great introdu introduction. Uh, my name is Avkash, and I'm uh, leading uh, our uh, Mechanica AI platforms and business teams. And today, uh, we will be talking about how you could use driverless AI with Splunk. And uh, before I really talk about uh, how you can use driverless AI with Splunk, I just want to give a very quick introduction about who we are, what is Mechanica. So Mechanica is, a, is, a, is a, uh, we really do not have a big presence over uh, United States, but it's a Japanese company, it's an old company. And we are basically technology reseller, a soft professional services company. Uh, it's about um, 3,000 3, employees so far, and we have over $4 billion US uh, dollar business uh, selling technology sales. So we are really very big in terms of technology sales. We have uh, several uh, groups within our company. We have global presence. We have, we have offices in almost 18 countries. And we are, in terms of software sales, we, we are really very big. Last year, uh, our, we, are, we are exclusive for Splunk in, in Asia. And it's, it's almost like $300 million worth of Splunk we sold to our partners. So Splunk is really very uh, close to us. And that, what we are really trying to do is that we are trying to use the power of Splunk in manufacturing, and then we are trying to add the driverless AI top of it. So how the manufacturing companies can very quickly take their manufacturing data and start really uh, modeling and start using for machine learning. Okay, so uh, again, uh, my, my plan is to just to let you guys know that how you can start uh, using uh, driverless AI with Splunk. So I just want to know how many of you guys are really uh, from manufacturing background? Okay, so we still have, it's very nice, yeah. And how many of you really store your data in Splunk? Yeah, so at least, yeah, we have, yeah. So if you are not using Splunk, I think it's a time to start using Splunk. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so let's see, uh, again, uh, because uh, a uh, few of you are only from manufacturing, and uh, you know there is there is nothing new about manufacturing. But the AI is really trying to uh, come in very big play for manufacturing companies, and we would say that uh, in, uh, because it's, it's for me is uh, less than uh, about eight eight nine months since I joined Mechanica, and when um, I worked almost two years in H2 before joining Mechanica. So I really understand the power of machine learning and the H2O community and the product, what we have done. Now what we are really trying to do is that we are trying to take the uh, H2O and H2O technology and go to the area where it's really not available. So we are trying to expedite the, the machine learning for manufacturing company, especially in Asia and starting from Japan. So here you could see it's a manufacturing plant. Uh, manufacturing means you're gonna end up building something. So there are several pieces that comes into the play. It could be one or many uh, different uh, parts, they really to work together to generate uh, your product. Manufacturing is really uh, compressing is also. So now, uh, 10 years back, where it used to be a big, large warehouse, now everything is condensed into a tiny con a container. And even in going further in the next five to 10 years, you will see that uh, about uh, a square mile area can be condensed, condensed into in few containers. So things are really getting compact and compact. So machine learning is coming into big play where the edge intelligence can very quickly decide what is happening. And that's where we are really looking into, that's what we really see the scope of machine learning. So if you take machine learning and what you really do is that you understand uh, uh, that what are the key components which are really responsible for the project you are working because one uh, machine learning, uh, sorry, one manufacturing bench, we can, pe people can use in very different way. The statistical analysis can be done for yield pr prediction. Somebody can also try for uh, quality control. So depend on what your area is, you really try to select certain data set and you are going to apply with that machine learning. So a couple of things to uh, look into, uh, it's, it's really, the volume of data is very large because sometimes you might be getting impressions per milliseconds or in few few milliseconds. So you really have very large amount of data coming in very fast speed, coming out from various sensors. So you really have a volume of data coming out at really very high speed. So how you can take that data? That data is, will also be in batch. 
because sometimes the production can happen in four hours, three hours, six hours, 10 hours, a day or two. So you have these batches of data. So you can take multiple batches of data, put together uh, in various uh, sample like group A, group one, group two, serving A, serving uh, B, C, and then you really use for machine learning. And again, uh, I like this animation, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So the area where we are focusing uh, using machine learning, because we are still uh, looking into how we can help our partners, uh, manufacturing companies, so cost saving, uh, preventive and predictive maintenance is number two, where really companies are looking into, uh, visual inspection and automated testing, and finally, we do have quality assurance. So these are the five key area where we are trying to use the machine learning, including driverless AI, and solve our customer problems. Uh, this is, uh, whole idea behind this uh, information is that once you, you have really large amount of data, you try to take a subset which is applied for your problem. Sometimes what happens, what we have seen, because uh, there are multiple group of, uh, group of uh, subsystems, they are sending data based on their own subset of growth. So for example, there, is a one, there are the five different PLCs in, in very small manufacturing area, and each PLC has its own time take. So now you are getting data from five different PLCs, and, and each PLC is a collection of sensor, but one time take. So the data you are getting, it has a multiple time takes. So how you can adjust that thing? So that's a one very big problem to understand, because you really want to adjust the time take. So that's a big problem to solve. And finally, uh, when we talk about optimization in manufacturing, what we, because again, it's a supervised problem we are trying to talk about because driverless really supports uh, currently supervised problems. We really need to have some kind of response where you really want to start backtrack everything. So what is that? What is the output? What is actually? Is it a, a number of items? To, uh, produce in in a given time. Maybe uh, one item came after 30 minutes of time. So what is it? Sometimes it could be just uh, whether the output something created or not, or polish happen or not. So there could be variety of. So you really need to know what is your output uh, response column is, and depending on that, you could really try to uh, pretty much model there. And here you could see that uh, we are talking about in the terms of driverless AI. So, we, we, uh, so for, uh, for Splunk, we try to use the Splunk design. So the way this Splunk has machine learning toolkit and driverless AI come in really handy and it uses the same command what is really available in Splunk and you can start everything directly in Splunk console. So how you can do it? Uh, once you have selected data for selected uh, batch, after that, you can take the data and you can, uh, you can import uh, depending on. If you do not have data in Splunk, then you can import it. But we, we, uh, the expectation is that you already have these streams available in your Splunk cluster, so you are really collecting the data already. So you already have the data available uh, in Splunk cluster, and then you use the Splunk machine learning toolkit to start the launcher and then run the commands. So, I have put together this information of, uh, just for, so if somebody really wanna try later, they have this information avail available that how they can install the Splunk driverless AI connector, how they can register various algorithms. So here, you, how you can really install. Here, the algorithms which are available with a driverless AI uh, in, in Splunk. So here you could see that uh, there is a time series uh, algorithm available, a regressor, as well as the classifier available and the terminology is used here is pretty much similar to what Splunk is really using. So, I don't know what you guys are seeing. Okay, but I do not see that. So, I'm gonna end it, so at least I could see. Are you guys seeing the Splunk console? Okay. So here you could see that, so we already have these driverless uh, AI algorithms already installed successfully in Splunk cluster. And here you can also see the configuration related with those algos. 
and they are part of one single package. So you really do not need to install three different ones. You just get a one uh, Splunk uh, a driverless AI connector package, but you really need to install the algorithms separately depending on whether you want all three of them or you just want one or two. Okay, so that's where it means that we do have a Splunk connector active running So once you uh, validate that the Splunk connector is installed properly uh, and it's available, the next step really comes that how you can uh, is, uh, start using it. So here uh, for the, uh, okay. So we already have the Splunk machine learning toolkit uh, you, which is really needed. Then after that, you just go to search. You should not go to uh, other sections. You really need to be here in Splunk Machine Learning Toolkit section. And here you can run commands such as input, lookup, and, and manufacturing. So we, you can see the data set is available here. And again, this data set is a subset of the uh, this particular problem we are really trying to solve and that, that problem is related with uh, uh, where is a company generating really a, a power bar. So, uh, so when, uh, if there is a serving which really supply all these different components right, to build the power bar and then heat and all that things are really needed to generate the power bar. So here is our input data and if you really want to uh, do the, use it, so I will just take this a script and plug it in. So here you could see that we are using this input, which is uh, manufacturing sensor data, and then we are running this fit command with driverless regressor where accuracy, so if I will not use this accuracy right now, and if I will run this command, and what's really going to happen is that this uh, command will start an experiment in back to driverless AI. So that's, so rather than coming driverless AI, connecting and pulling the data, you really have ability to go back to Splunk and directly do it. And at this point, uh, I think you guys really know driverless AI more than me. So you, once you are here, you can really understand what is going on and you can go from there. So that's the, that's the power of connector. And if by default, if you do not supply, you will see that also. somebody out here. <coughs> Look like they copying and paste this. I'm gonna have to give one more round. And that the connector is still uh, it's in, in uh, I would say, in alpha stage. So, okay, so this is the experiment which is started. So here you could see this experiment just started with one one, but if you really want to add more, uh, then you can take accuracy, you can change. Right now the uh, MLI is not available. So you can really change the accuracy and time depending on your need. And now you would see that there would be two of the experiments running. So you can. So I think, okay. Almost. 
So once you have driverless AI available, you can go to driverless AI console, you can play with it. You can, uh, after that, once uh, Splunk uh, initiated the driverless AI uh, experiment, then everything it just became whatever you can do with the driverless AI. So I think uh, that's all I really have to, to show you guys. Uh, the, uh, the Splunk connect connector is available privately, so if somebody really wanna try, they can contact either us or they can contact uh, uh, H2O folks, and then they can provide you that uh, Splunk connectors and you can try it. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, yep. Any questions? Any questions?